Midwest Outdoors, everybody. I'm Willie, and today we're going to do something just a little bit different. We're here in my fly tying cubicle because it kind of feels like a cubicle. It's not that big, but it's efficient. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today is an efficient fly tying setup, bench, storage, the whole thing. And I have discovered through the years, it's imperative to do any amount of tying. If I'm going on a trip and I'm going to be tying a lot of different flies, I want to be efficient. So what I've done is I've purchased a jeweler's bench for my fly tying bench. Um, there are a lot of different ones out there. Uh, they're not that expensive. Mine I purchased from Seattle findings and uh, it's a great bench. I have this drawer right here and what I use this drawer for, for it's called a lap pan and I store when I'm tying everything that drops down from my vise drops in here instead of on the floor and hopefully I don't track it through the rest of the house makes my wife much happier. Next I have this drawer. Now this drawer is really nice because I can put all my miscellaneous tools, my scissors, uh, everything in here. Uh, and when I need it, I just pull it out of there. It's not on top of the bench, it's out of the way. Leaving the top of the bench for, say, if I, whatever I'm tying at the time, I can put those materials on, on top here. And easy access, I know where they are. It works great. Also, I have these side drawers, storage. Then I have my middle drawer. I put all my hooks and my bead, beads and whatnot in there. Then I have this tray. This tray is just golden. It's worth its weight. As you can see, I have my vise uh, mounted here. Now, you notice it's the clamps upside down. Well. I had to do that, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to access my drawers. But it works, it's fine. But this table, uh, this tray really is just uh, worth its weight, as I said. Um, gosh, you know, like my dubbing, I've got my little piece of paper here and slide my dubbing right over. Uh, and also, if you notice how tall this is, if you're tying flies and you're bending over like this all the time you're gonna the back of your neck's gonna start hurting after the while after a while and you're gonna get really fatigued this way you're looking straight at the fly you're keeping your back straight and that's extremely important uh, if you're gonna sit at your bench for any length of time also I went and added a upper shelf um, real simple. I think I spent 30 bucks in uh, oak uh, at the home in the depot and uh, threw a little bit of um, stain on it and it works out good because I have all my glues, uh, my beads, uh, dubbing, uh, dispensers, uh, everything up here off the bench. Again, leaving the bench free for materials as you're tying. And then Go to, I uh, went to Joanne Fabrics. Uh, this is a uh, thread caddy for sewing. Uh, works out really great. I can put all my threads up here, easy access. I even hang my bobbins from, from here. Uh, so just efficiency. Uh, I don't have to dig through anything to find a thread. I don't have to dig through anything to find a tool. And it works out really well. Also, what's wonderful Every January, I think, um, craft stores such as Joanne Fa Joanne's Fabrics has a sale on totes. I went through this year and I bought a ton of totes and I was able to separate stuff out. I had them in totes already, but I didn't have very many. I didn't even realize how much I had until I actually started sorting it out. I have totes for dubbing. Um, totes for, well, actually, you know, different types of dubbing, more of my synthetic dubbings, my uh, hairline dubbings I have a tote for, I have a tote for natural dubbings, I have a tote for 
uh, feathers, necks, uh, miscellaneous feathers, um, marabou, saddle hackle. I have a tote that's just dedicated to seal head flies. So when I'm tying and I want to go for materials, right there, I don't have to dig through a box. Well, is this the right box? Maybe this is the right box. Everything's labeled up on a shelf and it makes it quite simple to tie. Well, you know, that really uh, is about it for setting up a bench. It's, it's pretty simple. You don't necessarily have to get a jeweler's bench. You don't have to be extravagant as I. Um, uh, personally, I am a goldsmith by trade, so it just made sense to me to get another jeweler's bench uh, to, do, to uh, have for fly tying but it works out great. And they have different size ones, uh, tabletop benches that have the same configuration, not as much storage, not enough space. But uh, check it out. You can uh, go to uh, uh, seattlefindings.com. Uh, I think a real, realgrandy.com has uh, uh, jeweler's benches. And um, I think if you do any amount of time, you will be really pleased to be able to work with your back straight, your head up, not bent over, you'll be able to tie much better, much more efficiently, efficiently, and I guess that's the point. So I feel really strongly now, since we've been talking about fly tying, we're not actually tying a fly though, are we? No, we're not. I think we're gonna go fishing. All right, I'll be back in a little bit. Enjoy this clip. I'm gonna pull Steve on you. Slide down now that I'm all broke off. <laughs> yeah. But every last piece of fishing gear I have is anywhere but fishable. I wouldn't do that to you. You just did. Son of a Vondruk. <laughs> <laughs> this is almost a guaranteed fish right now, Willie. I'm calling it. Mm -hmm. You know, that kills ducks. There it is. Fish on. Right. Fish on. <laughs> Hot dog. What did I just say? <laughs> oh, that is classic. That is classic. That is flat classic. Well. And that is crow molly. Dave, why don't you switch spots with me here and I'll get us okay. to the bank, okay? <laughs> okay, I'll just work us over here to the bank. Get out, we got a rubber net. Oh, is it beautiful. I would say undoubtedly he's gonna be a wild fish. <laughs> I'm sorry, Brian. What's <laughs> there to apologize really. about? <laughs> I don't care. Brian just broke off, so I pulled the anchor, slide down the hole just a little bit, got first cast in the in the new water, and bang, I hit one. It's a classic move by a friend of ours. Oh man, he's hanging out there. Remember how uh, poor this thing scoops, Dave? Uh-huh, I do. So when we get to it, if you can hold him up best you can. Holy Woo. cow, look at him go! Ha ha ha! Oh, baby! Nope, 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 nope. You should be. <laughs> well, if whatever you can do. Uh, 
Wow, what a strong, oh, these native fish are so strong, aren't they, Brian? Oh, yeah. Good thick fish. He's stuck. There we go, this is it. This is it. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got a, we got a rubber net here so we don't hurt these things. Better let it go, huh, Brian? Yep. Oh. There it goes. <laughs> yes. Good job, Brian. Welcome back, everybody. Well, that's about it for this segment of Northwest Outdoors. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you can always email me at logan1studio at aol.com or northwest uh, outdoors, that's D O R S, at aol.com. So, till the next time, good fishing to you.